In subsequent slides, I will share in more details the use of electrical method for online PD measurements. This slide is about the use of TEV sensors. TEV stands for transient earth voltage. We are measuring the induced voltage at the external metal surface of the electrical assets. Example, at the air insulated switchgear, cable box of transformers. The TEV sensor is a capacitive probe with a frequency response of 3 to 100 megahertz. A typical sensitivity is 110 millivolts per volt. This means one volt of TEV will output 110 millivolts. This slide shows the propagation of TEV signal at the metal surface of the electrical assets. Example, the metal enclosure of an AIS. The TEV signal is of high frequency and subjected to skin effects. The TEV signal flows only at the surface area of the metal. The TEV signal does not propagate through the entire thickness of the metal but instead will flow at the inner skin surface of the metal. The TEV signal will follow the curvature of the metal and eventually flows to the outside surface of the metal, where the TEV sensor is placed. The skin depth of the metal is inversely proportional to the frequency of the TEV signal. A 50 MHz TEV signal flowing in steel has a skin depth of 1 micron. This slide is about HFCT or High Frequency Current Transformers. This HFCT will not detect current that are 50 Hz. Due to the material of the core, the frequency response of HFCT is from 100 kHz to 30 MHz. Common material for the core of HFCT is soft ferrite. HFCT are usually of split core construction and whose purpose is to facilitate the connection of the HFCT to any existing ground cable. This slide shows the connection point of the HFCT. HFCT are commonly used for online PD measurement of screen type HV cables. In Singapore, the most common type of screen is copper tape with at least 50% overlap. A defect within the insulation of the cable will produce PD current in the copper tape and it will flow to earth via the earth break of the cable termination. The HFCT is connected at the earth break of the cable termination, which is available at both ends of the cable. Any PD current flowing will be detected by the HFCT. As the PD current propagates, there is attenuation of the PD current and change in frequency content on the PD signal. The higher frequency component of the PD current will be more attenuated than the lower frequency component. This explains the lower frequency response of the HSCT at 100 kHz to 30 MHz. This slide is about UHF sensors for online PD measurement. UHF stands for ultra high frequency. It is from 300 to 3000 MHz. UHF PD sensors are used when you want to localize the PD source. If PD is detected by UHF sensors, it means that the PD is near to the measurement point. UHF PD sensors are very suitable for the detection of PD at cable termination. Premature failures of cable termination is very common in Singapore. This slide is about the connection of the UHF PD sensors. The UHF sensors can be inductive or CT type. The UHF sensors can also be of capacitive type. Similar to the HFCT, these 
UHF CTs are connected to the earth break of the cable termination and available at both ends of the cable. A capacitor exhibits lower impedance as the frequency is increased. PD current, which is of high frequency, would prefer to flow into capacitors because of the lower impedance. This slide shows the connection of UHF PD sensors at the cable chamber of a 22kV GIS. The UHF sensor, capacitive type in this picture, is connected to the earth break of the cable termination. The purpose is to detect PD at the cable termination, which is a common defect. In subsequent slides, I will describe the use of embedded sensors which are not intended for PD detection but can act as PD sensors. The embedded nature of these sensors within the electrical assets makes it very close to any PD defect and makes it a suitable PD sensor. This slide is about the use of RTD or motors as PD sensors. RTD or resistance temperature detector is used for temperature measurement. The RTD are inserted at the stator windings of the motors. Common type of RTD is the PT100 which uses platinum as the sensing element. However, it is the long lead wires to the sensing elements that acts as an antenna to detect PD. This slide shows three typical constructions of RTD. The two-wire RTD is less accurate in temperature measurement because of the inclusion of the resistance of the lead wire in the temperature measurement. The three or four-wire RTD is more accurate in temperature measurement because the resistance of the lead wires is subtracted from the temperature measurement. This slide shows the connection of a HFCT over all the respective lead wires of the RTD. The best point of measurement is at the RTD terminal box at the motor. This provides the best sensitivity and immunity from pickup of background noise as compared to measurement of the RTD at the remote starter panel of the motor. If there are embedded PD couplers at the motor. The PD measurement of the RTD can be compared for accuracy. This slide shows the use of VDS for online PD measurement. VDS stands for Voltage Detection System as per IEC 61243. The VDS is a safety related device to detect the presence or absence of voltage at the cable termination of a GIS. Because of its embedded nature at the cable termination, it is physically close to any PD defects at the cable termination. Hence, it is a suitable PD sensor. This slide shows the connection to measure online PD of the VDS. The coupling electrode of the VDS is embedded very near to the cable termination. The coupling electrode can be either a part of the cable termination or part of the GIS. Any PD at the cable termination will be picked up by the coupling electrode. The PD measurement set is connected to the display unit located at the front of the VDS. This slide shows a typical setup for online PD measurement of the VDS of a 22kV GIS. The PD signal from the VDS display unit is connected to a quadrupole. The quadrupole is the same as those used for offline PD measurement to IEC 270. 
the quadrupole is to prevent potential damage to the more expensive PD measurement set in the event of a transient overvoltage. A damaged quadrupole is cheaper to replace.